Hello everyone, Rondo Fanatic coming at you with another video. Today we're working on another N54, which has an upper coolant hose problem, as well as we're going to do an upgrade to the coolant outlet at the water jacket that goes into the cylinder head. I'm going to go ahead and drain part of the coolant out, and we'll show you how to do it all step by step. So let's go ahead and get started. The first order of business is the hood shocks don't work very well. So we want to make sure that the hood doesn't kill us while we're working on it. Yeah, that's not good enough. So we're going to go ahead and prop this up. We'll go ahead and replace it with a brand new shock. So the car needs two shocks, obviously. We've only got one. One's on back order, so we're just waiting on that to come in. We're going to go ahead and prop up the hood. We'll go ahead and remove this shock on the passenger side here, and we'll replace it with a new one. Tool of choice, small flathead screwdriver. Got it. And the same thing on the bottom. Stick the screwdriver in and rotate it. And slide it right off the ball. There we go. And the new one goes in. Just push it in and it clicks. Same thing on the top. And the hood support falls down. But the good news is the shock's doing the work for us realized about halfway in and I had put the shock upside down so we corrected that. Now with the hood finally holding itself up we can go ahead and get started. First order of business on this job is to go ahead and get your pan set up underneath the car to catch any fluid that's going to come out. I do my best to set them up where I think it's going to come out on the bottom. Obviously with the undershields there you could go ahead and remove them if you want it to be more accurate. However, it's not really necessary because the fluid's going to find its way all over the place. First, we're going to remove the cover plate across the radiator. Off comes the cover plate. Slide it up towards the windshield. So underneath we have the radiator core support here. Here's the actual offender, this little hose right here. As we can see, it's been leaking out right here at this hose connection, it's pretty common. These hoses, over time, they get very weak and they crack, they break, or they just start leaking altogether. So we're gonna go ahead and replace this whole upper hose here and upgrade this water outlet right here. They're always plastic on the factory hose. We just get rid of the plastic and replace it with a metal pipe. What's important about this is you don't have to replace the hose unless your hose is damaged or very worn out. If it is, go ahead and replace it, but otherwise you can just break off this plastic piece here. We'll clip off this metal clamp and then we'll go ahead and install the new one and clamp it down. So we'll go ahead and remove the first connection here. I use a pick tool. Just lift that straight up and wiggle it off. Sometimes they're tight, you just got to work with them. Don't pull too hard because otherwise you're going to hurt yourself. So we've got that disconnected. When it's off, I go ahead and click them back down. As you can see, they break. It just pops out of there. And there's the problem. Okay, this is the wrong color coolant. The coolant's green. The car calls for BMW blue, so we're going to have to get some fresh BMW blue coolant in this at some point in the future. So at this stage, we're going to go ahead and remove the upper radiator hose here and let that drain out. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and loosen this water jacket here, try and catch as much coolant as I can. Using a towel for this. So that can catch as much as possible. 10 millimeter on the bolts here. Once those two are loose, you can remove them by hand. Sounds like the neighbor needs new brakes. One. Yeah, 
in two. Now to make a mess. Just wiggle the hose up and down while pulling out slowly. So not too bad. Coolant level is low enough in the car from leaking and it wasn't a problem. Thankfully this one isn't too bad. A lot of corrosion build up inside there. I don't think this plastic will last much longer, but we're gonna go ahead and replace that. Now we'll go ahead and remove the upper hose here. Again, pick tool is your best friend, coming from the side right here. and pull towards you. Same as the others, just wiggle it off. This one can be stubborn. Out she comes. We've removed our towel. Go ahead and pull up on this release here. And wiggle it off. Come on. A little gentle prying here with a screw box, screwdriver. Wiggle it out. This one can be removed from the driver's side. Pop that out. And I just popped it back in. Best angle of attack is to come in with a screwdriver between the connection points here. Just gently pry it off. you do it on both sides so you're being uniform. And there we go. New part goes on. Click the lower connection first. Upper part to the radiator. <clears throat> then to the oil filter housing assembly. Snap the hose into place. The course port and connect to the expansion tank. In. So for this part, you wanna move this away from the engine. Make sure you keep this hose pointed down at all times because as you break this piece, if you get a plastic piece that breaks and goes through the hose, it's gonna lodge in your impeller on your water pump and your water pump's gonna seize. So you'll be doing that next. Best way to break this is to take a large pair of channel locks, open them up to a pretty good size out like that. Grip the hose right over the metal clamp. Again, making sure that it's facing downward. Squeezing the clamp protects the hose from being damaged by the teeth on your channel locks. 
as well as it's going to expand the metal ring so that you can clip it off. And then just squeeze really tight. That was easy. And go back the other way. Garbage comes out. Be sure to get all of these pieces. Make sure you have every last bit. All right, that's cleaned up. Now we need to just slide this metal little clamp. Usually I would snip these off, but I think in this case we might be able to just get it off with a screwdriver. Perfect. Here's our new replacement kit. Comes with a new O-ring and a band clamp. So you'll put the barbed end into the hose. Make sure you get the band clamp on first. Go ahead and tighten your band clamp. Try to align the ears on this so that when you stick it back in the block, it's gonna be at the right angle. Otherwise, you'll have to loosen it and play with it later. This is a simple upgrade that'll prevent a catastrophic failure when you're driving down the road. That's snug. Go ahead and wiggle it back into place. bolts in. Snug them down. Not too tight. Keep in mind you're dealing with aluminum threads. Snug, nothing's touching, no wiring's being damaged, good to go. Cover plate goes back on. It's removed, get the front lip here underneath the plastic bushing, pops right in. We start the bolts by hand just so we don't get anything cross-threaded. <sighs> Zip them down with a few uggadugas. Job done. All right, we'll top off the coolant. Normally mixing colors is bad, but in this case, we're gonna be doing the water pump very shortly. So all of this is gonna come out anyway. And we're gonna go ahead and flush the system, which I'll create a new video on that. For all intents and purposes, it's better to have some coolant than none. Place the cap gently in the top. Now hop in the car with the key on engine off, set the heat to full, and step on the gas pedal for about 10 seconds. This will initiate the automatic bleeding process. We've got the bleeding process going on its own right now. It should take approximately 10 minutes. When it's done, we'll go ahead and check the coolant level. All right, that concludes this video today. The car's running a lot better now. We've got everything finished up. Everything's been bled. The coolant is good. And I'll see you guys next time. 
Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button.